Today's video is sponsored by Coconut Monkey Electronics. For custom handmade pickups in a variety of cool colors and materials and custom rewinds, check out their website and take their perfect pickup quiz. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, what's happening, dudes and dudettes? Brad the Guitologist here. In this video, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. A little while back, I got a, an email message from this company, uh, Pavono, or Pavano, or however you want to pronounce it, and uh, they were gracious enough to offer to send me, uh, free of charge, this DC power supply for evaluation. Now, I noticed also a couple of other YouTubers uh, that are kind of in you know, the same sort of uh, bracket in, t in terms of, I guess, influencers uh, have received this same power supply also, other channels that I watch. And a couple of those have already taken the thing fully apart and opened it up and done all that stuff. So what I thought I would do uh, is a little bit different. I thought I would review this item, but at the same time, I thought I would also um, build something. Whenever uh, Noki Edwards of The Ventures passed away recently, I kind of got, I kind of got the itch to build, um, a replica of the fuzz pedal that is that is sort of believed to have been used by him. Uh, no one knows really for sure. I mean, they, they think they know what he used, but they don't know exactly what the schematic or circuit would have looked like, but they think it would have been something similar to the Mose Wright uh, fuzz circuit. So what we're gonna do in this video, uh, I'm going to try to replicate uh, in, a, in a roundabout way that Mose Wright, uh, Mose Wright fuzz circuit and in the process of doing that, I thought we might uh, uh, test out this DC power supply at the end by powering up our little prototype. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. All right, before we open this box, let's take a look at the specs here. It says we should expect some small transient overshot volts. Um, let's see, upon switch on under full load. So that means you know, when you first switch the thing on, it's not going to overload your circuits more than three and a half percent or so. So that's pretty good. So it's well regulated, I suppose. Uh, short rising time with uh, with a full load attached. Um, so that means it comes up to power pretty quickly. Uh, smooth falling down at idle status. Uh, smooth voltage waves upon sh shortening and we could probably go through and test all this stuff but once again that's probably not going to be really the focus of this video I'll let other people uh, take care of that and I think some of uh, some of the other youtubers are actually already have tested some of these things to see if they are within spec and uh, they they've already done a pretty decent job at that I think there are two different versions of this PS305 and the PS305 H the only difference between the two is the H has one more digit I think uh, in the readout display. Other than that, they're exactly the same. I think the 305 is a little bit cheaper, so this is the one I would probably buy if uh, given my druthers. And I will put links to both of these models down in the description or down on the first, down in a pinned comment or something if, if you guys are interested in those. Uh, and when you use those links, they're affiliate links, so I'll get a small kickback. You know, if you want one of these or you need one, uh, use that link and it helps support this channel. Man, I'll tell you what, first, right off the bat, looks like it's made a pretty decent, de decent metal. It's got a decent, decent weight and stuff to it, too. It, it does not feel cheap. It does come with a little operation manual. It doesn't really tell you a whole lot. And it looks like they have some other models, too. The, six, the PS603 and the 603H, and those go from 0 to 60 volts instead of 0 to 30. You know, I don't know. For the stuff that I do, I don't think I don't see myself really going much over 30 volts. If I need to do that, I've got another power supply. That's that that old tube power supply I repaired on the channel a while back. That one will go, I think, above. That one will go pretty high, actually, as high as I need it to in the hundreds. We might as well pop it open. Do some due diligence here. It's, it's okay. Seems like an all right little chassis we have some internal trimmer pots yeah we've got some little internal trimmer pots right there um, I not a clue what they would be trimming probably the uh, probably the voltage um, and maybe the current readouts I don't know judging by the CC and CV indicators above each pot it appears as if those control the a cutoff for the constant current and constant voltage. That would be my guess. 
This power supply is what's called a switch mode power supply. If you're interested in learning more about switch mode power supplies, there is an excellent video on the subject by uh, Mr. Carlson's lab. Uh, he's done a good job explaining how switch mode power supplies work. And 12 volt vids, uh, the YouTuber, has a really good video on this particular model of power supply also explaining how the switch mode uh, power supply works within this particular model. Probably not something you would ever need to know as a user, but you know, it's stuff that's good to know if you ever had to repair the thing. It looks like it's put together reasonably well. I, I mean, I don't see any real junky construction or anything here. I mean, it's, you know, they've got everything secured secured to the board, you know, where it, where it should be. The only, this little bracket right here is not, it's kind of tack welded in. And it's one of the main things holding this board up. And I would think if that right there broke, you would probably, this thing would, I mean, you're not taking it on the road or anything. These are down here are tack welded too, these ones on the bottom. There's one here and one here. You can see how they're tack welded in instead of screwed. Screws would have been better because then you wouldn't have a potential failure point. So that I guess that's kind of weak, but nobody's ever going to be inside this thing, you know, jerking around on this board anyway, so I don't think it really matters. Just looking for cold solders or evidence of anything like that. It looks like, yeah, maybe a sloppy solder joint. Well, no, that's not too bad. That's, there's, that's fine. And that one maybe is a little bit sloppy. Looks like we got some residue or flux or something right here on these. Those connections might have been hand soldered. And we've got a couple of ribbon connectors connecting this uh, front board up over here. You'll notice coming up right here there is a trim pot there, that blue thing, and there's another one right there not sure what they're used for but um, they adjust something or other but yeah like i said reasonable construction that's really not what we came here for what we came here for was to uh was to use the thing so let's put the lid back on and put it to use another thing of note i forgot to mention this thing also does come with uh, a pair of gator clip leads with the banana plugs on the other end um so that's convenient. I was actually going to search around for some plugs and I realized, oh, they gave, gave me some. Um, it also comes with a pretty long power cord. I'm kind of impressed. Usually you get, for bench equipment, you don't usually get uh, real long cords. But this is, a pro I don't know, it's probably, probably five feet, something like that, of cord. So, you know, decent, decent length of cord too. But let's set this aside for a second and... Um, uh, find a schematic for what we're going to build. All right, when you do a Google image search of uh, the Mosrite Fuzzrite uh, schematic, you come up with several different ones. Um, this one here, drawn by a fellow named Philip Bryant, looks looks to be pretty legible to me, so we'll go with this one. So what we need to do is get a parts list off of this and just basically accumulate all these parts together in one spot, and then we will breadboard it and put some power to it and see if we can make it work. Okay, so here are the parts we need. We need just four resistors, four capacitors, two NPN transistors, uh, two potentiometers, and two jacks. So let's go ahead and get uh, these set up on the breadboard to get everything wired together and put some power to it. Okay, I have this uh, Mosrite Fuzzrite circuit breadboarded. Uh, it's pretty ugly looking at the moment of course that's a breadboard build for you um, and it's really noisy I've got you know I've got wires going where they should and it's kind of haphazardly laid out on here it's not it's not even done the best it could be done uh, even for a breadboard but oh well there I'll show you uh, the tone I've got and I think I've got a close approximation to the tone I was going for with that Noki Edwards sound
again, just really, really noisy. You know, obviously it's a breadboarded circuit, but uh, I guess I could build one of these out and um, just for the hell of it. I think I might also experiment with uh, with some with uh, building a big muff at some point. I uh, don't know if I'll do that today, but yeah, um, you know this power supply back on the power supply, which is the reason for the video. Uh, right now, it's only registering in volts. I don't think it's drawing any kind of appreciable amps. It's it's too small really to be even registered, and as a result, the internal circuitry has got this thing set to constant volts. Now, if I were to put a like a big resistor or something on on here and crank it up, which I, I could do for you here. Let's see, how about this little guy? Um, 50 ohms, and we'll try it out. There we go, see now we're registering some amps with that resistor hooked up. Uh, and it's still on constant voltage, so I can dial it up. And again, this thing will handle five amps, and I'm only at a half an amp right there, so I'm all the way up to 30 volts. Let's see. So voltage-wise, it'll go up past the rated voltage. Uh, it'll go up, uh, you know, about 31.9 on this machine. Yeah, that thing's starting to get a little, little warm now. What are we up to? Maximum 177 degrees, 183, and climbing 85. You know, you heard when I disconnected that, the fan actually stops running. Uh, so the fan, internal fan on this thing, only comes on whenever, you know, you have something to cool down, whenever it's working hard. Um, which is kind of cool, because if you don't like background noise on your bench, or especially like me, if you do a lot of videos, you're shooting videos while using something like this, and if you're breadboarding stuff out and it's not drawing anything, you don't need the fan running the whole time. So... That's, you know, that's kind of cool that it doesn't sit there and run constantly. All right, let's see. Ready? Got some sparks there. See the sparks? There we go. Now it's gone down to uh, constant amps mode or constant current mode rather see there how the light changed now we're at 2.4 amps uh, and I can control the amperage and thus uh, control the voltage see if I do something to the voltage now it's it's in constant well there it goes now it's kicked in where I can control voltage but once it gets up so far it switches to constant current mode because uh, it doesn't want you to overload the thing See, I can't, now I can go up some, some more. But see, I've exceeded the maximum rating. 5.2 amps, 19 volts is the maximum I can get with the five, with this, uh, uh, with this res particular resistor. Now this thing is so big and it'll dissipate so much heat, it's probably not even gonna get hot, that hot, that quickly. Oh, I got some smoke. I got some smoke from somewhere. I got some smoke from over here. So what I forgot to remember about this resistor is that it is adjustable. That is, the resistance can actually change. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute, but that's the reason that uh, the smoke is only coming from one end of the resistor and the rest of it's cold. But you'll see what I mean in just a second. Oh, it's smoking on the... Uh the very end of the resistor over there. Yeah, it's getting hot right there. Look at that. Here. See that? 400 degrees, 500 degrees. Wow. Look at that. See my reading down here? Well, 400 576 degrees right there at the at that pole. It's a bit confusing at first cuz you have this wire right here on top hooked into uh, this thing um, and actually this is a variable resistor that's what this is you can actually loosen this and move it along see how this is exposed right in here you can actually loosen it and move it 
to vary the resistance. That's like a dead short, basically. It's point, point six one ohms. So I would have to actually move this or or cut this wire, one of the two, uh, unscrew, because see the screw, and it moves, and there's a contact being made right there. So the only thing really getting hot are these first couple of windings right there uh, on this uh, resistor. But it didn't burn it up. So yeah, that's going to conclude our little demonstration on this uh, Pavano PS305. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you need one of these things, um, I, I can highly recommend it. It's, I mean, for the money, uh, what is it, like I said, in the $50, $60 region, somewhere around in there. I mean, it, it was one of the cheaper ones you can possibly get. And to be one of the cheapest ones, it's decent quality. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a, a DC power supply for your bench or if you want to do, you know, stuff like I'm doing here, if you want to do some breadboarding, uh, I'll put links to the breadboard where you can get one of these um, and also the little wires that you can use with your breadboard that are already pre-cut and all that stuff, along with where to get one of these things. And you can, uh, you know, start building your own little pedals and stuff uh, without having to dig for power supplies all the time. You have this around um, so you can you know you can vary the supply because some pedals that you're going to come across or some circuits will need more like 12 volts some will need more like most will need 9 volts some even will use like 6 volts um, so you know that'll allow you to vary your voltage very easily vary it very finely as well because you have a fine adjustment as well as a coarse adjustment so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, hit the subscribe button down below if you have. And stay tuned. Later on, I think I'm going to go ahead and build this out into a pedal and uh, clean up some of the noise, and we'll give it a proper demonstration. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and go, and you all take care.